Why this is Chuck Grigsby. We are back at it. We're doing the King Project. Thank you so much for giving me a great opportunity once again to share with you guys Dr. King and some of his great work and legacy uh, when it comes to a lot of change and growth that we had in our history due to this person. Dr. King uh, was given a speech in 1963 called Maladjusted, and I chose a quote from that, and it goes like this. Human salvation lies in the hands of the creatively maladjusted. Now, the reason why I chose this was because there was a lot of progress that made that Dr. King highlight in this speech, uh, and he really was talking about a lot of change that he couldn't deny. And here's some of those things. Uh, African Americans went from 750,000 people in 1948 to 1,200,000 in 1960 who voted. Um, and uh, segregation was now illegal. Um, Open-ended lynches in the Deep South was pretty much non-existent. And uh, again, he was in a situation where he was really highlighting a lot of the positivities that had changed uh, for African Americans in their plight. Um, but he also wanted to put some realness, if you will, some truthfulness to uh, these numbers and to really the reality of what African Americans were dealing with. You know, because of all this change, because of a lot of different things that were going on, there was a new social issues that were arising that really gave problems and plagued progress. Here's some um, examples to inside the numbers. Um, and 42% of African Americans were making less than $2,000 a year, uh, comparatively to 17% of the white Americans. 21% uh, uh, of African Americans were making less than $1,000 a year, and then compared to white Americans, 5%. So he really wanted to show that there was some, some disparity in some of these numbers. Uh, the schools were overcrowded for African Americans. Uh, they were in a situation where the, the standards of the schools were a lot lower. And so they produced maybe a lot of unskilled labor workers. Uh, you know, and, and so at that time, you know, automation was happening. And there was a situation where those workers were eventually not going to be in a situation where there was no work available to them. Um, there were still murders going on, I believe, in Mississippi that year. He said that uh, 10 people were murdered, and uh, there was no justice to those murders. Um, churches were still getting bombed. Um, you know, there was a joke that uh, what church were going to bomb today by some of the different people who were involved with some of the violence. Um, and so, and there was still, I believe, 4 million uh, unregistered voters in the Deep South due to the lit test and some of the different systematic things that were in place to prevent them from really realistically actually voting so he really wanted to like highlight the good but also represent the bad and really show that um these new problems need to be dealt with they need to be dealt with and if they weren't they were gonna uh create a sense of no hope create a sense of violence and rioting um that our social system that was gonna have to deal with so he wanted to really talk about racial segregation that was happening now uh as opposed to more of the physical segregation that was happening and what they dealt with um, and then a lot of the kickback he got from this and some of the different things he had talked about and discussed was that, you know, time would heal all and time is just time goes and just be OK with progress happening slowly. And he really wanted to make sure that time uh, was not on our side as far as African-Americans being in that plight. And, and, and it was really on the side of the oppressor. And, and you needed to act now because that was not going to be the way that uh, they got themselves out of that situation. So he really wanted to get things going. They weren't going fast enough. And he was really pressing that. And that was really going to be addressing the social issues. Uh, also, um, he really wanted to emphasize because a lot of people didn't have a lot of faith in legislation and some of the different laws that were being changed and some of the different things that he was promoting um, that was going on. He had the upcoming uh, voter uh, registration uh, act that was going to be in play later on that year as well. And so he really wanted to make sure these things had teeth to them. They really had some different things in play to address the current things that were happening and not be caught up with the status quo. Um, so you can do that. And once you do have that legislative change, then you can change behavior. You may not be able to change maybe the hearts of men, but you can really change their habits and behavior. And that's how you can do that by promoting action programs and doing different things uh, that really address that. And Dr. King really did that very well uh, within that speech by highlighting those certain things, uh, giving really a basic call out to a lot of people who are being silent to the current conditions that we're dealing with, despite all the change. Uh, and that's where the maladjusted comes from. And that's really what he was talking about that I really thought was brilliant of him. And he really wanted to make sure that people still continue to defy these social standards and be a part of the solution. Uh, there was a lot of good chunk of the white America people that, you know, who were against some of the things that were going on, but they were being silent. And, you know, he was just really uh, adamant about how they need to be involved with the social change. They need to be, be creatively maladjusted. Um, and it's to really for them to take the fight uh, 
continue the fight and really support the new things that were happening, the new social issues that were that were open ended, if you will, uh, for African Americans. So they didn't have a step back uh, in progress. So the newer direction Dr. King was going in towards this time in his life, you can really see that how he ended up really, um, really taking on Vietnam War and some of the different things that were happening, a lot of money that was going into that and, and how he saw the disparity in, in the U.S. and how he really was adamant and he stuck with that. You could tell also that he knew that at this time there was still about 40 or 50 million people in poverty, whites and blacks, I believe. And he really wanted to make sure that, you know, for us to be creatively maladjusted and not just be OK with that and really fight for change. And I just really thought that was special. And I really wanted to highlight that today's discussion uh, with his speech that he gave in 1963. And you know, uh, he uh, was in a situation where he was killed in 1968. So there was a lot of different things that he was doing from that point or over uh, and really moving away from the civil rights stuff and really going into the social economic uh, equality and really talking uh, adamantly against about the war. And, you know, that was really, I think, part of his great transition from from that to that in a way where, again, uh, he was really unpopular and really was isolated and, and really in a situation where he was evolving uh, and his counterparts weren't when it comes to the major issues. And again, showing again that he was right as time went on and really showing that he was really on another plane as far as being able to see the big picture. So I just really wanted to focus on that in today's discussion uh, in the speech that he gave in 1963 called Maladjusted. Uh, and uh, we will be continuing uh, with the G-Unit project. Uh, we're coming with the King Project all month long of October. We're almost wrapping this thing up. And I just really, again, appreciate you guys' support. Uh, and we will be coming with more. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.